today we're going to be doing lab 11, identifying alcohols. Um, just the first two parts. So the first part we're going to look at the solubility of alcohols and water in hexane. Um, notice 1 through 4 are our standards and A and B will match one of those. So as the experiment begins, um, we have six test tubes and we're going to take our water and um, put about two milliliters of water into each test tube. Um, this is going to then allow us to see if our alcohols will mix with this water. So we're going to fill up, it just has to be an estimate, about two milliliters of water. And then we're going to take each alcohol and we're going to add it to that water. Um, a little bit less of the alcohol than of the water, so about a milliliter. Again, just an estimate. Um, as we're mixing these, we want to look for if um, there are layers still present. If there are layers, that's going to tell me that these do not mix. And if there are no layers, then they are mixing. Take um, a close look at these. Um, jot down observations like, do you see swirls? Does it mix just perfectly easily? Um, so make sure you're jotting down some observations. You see that? Those are the first layers that we've seen in test tubes. Again, you see those clear layers that just showed up in four? It looks a lot like um, oil and water, um, except it's not yellow like oil would be. Mixing is often accompanied with some swirls that you're seeing um, there, but then the um, swirls eventually go away. So we're going to make sure we mix these up real well, um, shake them up a little bit, and here's the results. Um, shaking them up, again, if you see layers, it's not soluble. And there's those really obvious layers where those alcohols are not mixing with water. It means they're not very much like water, right? Because like mixes with like. Sometimes as those layers separate back out, you get that cloudiness you can see in test tube four. Test tube A is kind of dirty, but that doesn't mean it has a layer in it. So here's those final results for mixing with water. Or not mixing with water. Alright, so we've got clean test tubes. Now we're going to do the same experiment, but with two mils of hexane in each of them. Um, so hexane is C6H14. It's very nonpolar. So we've got about two mils of hexane in each test tube, and now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to add the same alcohols, same order, and look for do they mix with a nonpolar solvent with hexane. Um, again, like mixes with like. So if they mix, we're assuming that they are alike. And keep in mind here that we're hoping that A and B each match one of the four known standard alcohols. Um, so that's what you're trying to match up as you make your observations, that they look exactly alike. Oops, up a little bit and take a closer look. Um, alcohol 1 here gets cloudy. I'm going to keep an eye on that one. As I shake it, you can kind of see a layer there. That surprises me because it's ethanol and I know that ethanol should be soluble in hexane. Um, I did that about four times to check what was happening and it came out as a layer every time. So that was surprising. Um, but these last two, I don't see any layers in those. So here the only one I saw was a layer in number one. Moving on, now we're going to do part B. So we're going to do a chemical property test, um, oxidizing alcohols. And we are going to look for a color change to more of a gray than a blue um, as this um, test is done. So we have three different ingredients here. First we're going to add the acetone, then we'll add the alcohol, and then we will add um, the chromic acid. It's painfully boring to watch myself put drops into test tubes, <laughs> so apologies. Um, much more fun if you got to do it in person. Um, but here we're adding um, our alcohols now to each test tube. 
It's always important to pay close attention to details so you don't um, add things in the wrong order, things like that. That's where, why scientists replicate their experiments over and over to make sure that there were no mistakes. Um, unusual data can either be, ooh, there was a breakthrough or there was a mistake. So you want to get rid of the mistake so that unusual data just means a breakthrough. So we're adding that alcohol to each test tube. And then lastly, we'll add the chromium, which is kind of orange in color. Um, the chromium gets reduced and the alcohol gets oxidized um, if this is a positive test. So notice it's very orangish yellow going in. Um, that test tube three just kind of turned a grayish color that we'll come back to. And you might notice some other changes that you can see in the other test tubes. Um, so fairly orange, but got kind of a, an off tinge there. Number three definitely looks dark after I mix it. Remember, mixing kind of lets all the molecules and ions touch each other, so that is important to help them. Here's our final results for the um, chromic acid test. And four is the one where you can see there was no reaction. That's that original orange color. So make sure you jot down the details of what you see in the colors there. Um, some might oxidize faster than others as well. Um, so that's worth noting. Um, this is all organic compounds that we're using today, so we're going to dump all of our test tubes into organic waste um, as you finish up. And then because there was that ambiguity on mixing, here's a little bit of extra data. Um, I smelled the chemicals for you, um, so you can utilize that in identifying your unknowns. Thanks for watching.